On this installment of We're Just Here to Make Friends, we deep dive into the latest episode of Married at First Sight, Season 13, Episode 1. We'll be talking about our impressions of Jose and Rachel. And what we think of their chances as a couple. Will it be a fairy tale? Or a train wreck? Jose is a 35-year-old NASA flight specialist who the experts match with Rachel, 33, who claims to be more confident than ever. If you haven't seen this episode, give it a watch and then come back. We want to hear your opinion in the comments below. This is your official spoiler alert. We love this show, so we don't want to spoil it. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching! watching. Reality television commentary show. Reality television creates storylines out of footage of real people's lives. Most of the time, this footage is from unrealistic or out of the ordinary situations. The way people react in unrealistic and extraordinary situations is entertainment. We only know these people through the show, which shapes a storyline around unrealistic situations. Basically, let's keep in mind that these are real people with complex histories, complex motivations, and complex feelings. We are only seeing a small part, which is fun. So fun. But hopefully, we can cheer them on and watch or root for them to just break up already. But this isn't a place to be cruel. So let's keep it kind in the comments. Because if you're brave enough. Or crazy enough. To let us in on your life. We thank you. And bless your heart. Thank you for entertaining us. Thank you for letting us learn from your failures. And celebrating your successes. And thank you for letting us in on sit with you in the in-between. <laughs> We're just here to make friends. We're just here to make friends. Let's start the show. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Cool. Okay, what can you tell us about Rachel? Rachel, 33 years old, the blossoming bride. Uh, what was her profession? Did you get that? I don't remember it either. If anyone let us know in the comments below, what was Rachel's profession? Yeah. Who do we got here? Rachel! I put all my notes in this bag. Also, there's some loose coins. Yeah. Keep things from blowing away. Ah. So the first thing that they have to do on this episode is tell their friends and family that they're getting married at first sight. Right. And it seems like they, like, know that this might be coming. Like, this is a process, and they might be chosen. And they've been told to all come here to this restaurant for some reason. So, yeah. like... It seems like a lot of the families are expecting something to be happening in these first scenes. Right. Okay. So who does Rachel tell? Does she bring friends or family or? She, Rachel tells her mom and her best friend. There's Larice. Just, uh, yeah, Larice. Larice, Rachel's. Really? I wrote down Rachel's mean, mean friend. Yeah. I wrote friend in quotes. Friend. Yeah. She was... She had some things to say. Okay. Yeah. Larice is the one who said, This guy has to like you at first sight. What if he hates you and is repulsed but still has to, just has to go through with it? What about that? Right. I think I want to be able to see all my notes. Hold on. Okay. You were, really, you were like, I'm going to write it all in one piece of paper. Which was really smart, babe. Oh, Rachel said that Larice is going to give her the cold, hard truth. That's right. So she thinks whatever Larice is saying is the, quote, cold, hard truth. Right. She said she she really, she wants her mom's approval, but she wants Larice's blunt reaction. Yes. And Larice said, the <laughs> biggest problem about you is that you're too accommodating and insecure. Yeah. Um, and that was crazy. You're too accommodating. That's your problem. It's like a direct quote. Uh, I also wrote down that Larice, for some reason, brought her dog to the shoot, which I feel like is not what anyone else did 
for any of the rest of these things. No, I did not. I didn't notice that, but uh, I didn't also didn't see any other dogs. No, so. she definitely like brought her dog, and Lifetime does a really good job at acknowledging dogs and being like, "This is a dog," mm -hmm. and they always give them a little title card, and it's really cute. And they did not do it for this dog. Like, I don't think that dog was supposed to be there. Larissa was like, "I'm gonna do whatever I want." Like, what do they call it? The blossoming bride, because she's like gaining all this confidence, um, and so it's kind of played as if she has this history of obesity that has made her feel. Um, self-conscious but then they go into it and it seems that she maybe has a history of self being self-conscious and she just happened to have a journey of being heavier than she wanted to be and then lost that weight which is great but it doesn't seem like it's quite the same it's kind of a non-story it's kind of a story about your insecurity because mm -hmm. it was like i'm doing a normal thing like everyone gained and lost weight and gained and lost weight during quarantine like i certainly gained a lot of weight i can't find our scale so i'm gonna say nothing probably probably i did too um i don't know she was like, I didn't deal with the global pandemic in a normal way. Like, I don't yeah. I don't know what that means, Rachel. Like, sweetie, <clears throat> it's fine. Your friend is really mean, though. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes people are blunt, but that means that actually they're just mean. They're like, I'm going to bring my dog. I don't care what the rules are. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Larissa said, I'm worried that, like, what if he thinks that you smell, I think is what she said. Was that her? I thought that was, uh... Oh, no, I have it written down. It oh, says, okay. Larissa says that they have to right. like you for saying, and they could think that you smell, and he could hate you, and he could be repulsed by you. So this is a cold, hard truth, like, you, you're, like, deep down, maybe actually repulsive, and you smell bad. Yeah. So. That was, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That, that was the first really thing she said. Mean. The first thing she said was, like, well, what if you, you know, get down the aisle and he, you know, thinks you smell bad? It really felt like crazy envy to me. Like, I don't know. Maybe mm. Larissa's in, like, a really solid relationship. We don't know her. We don't know her deal. Yeah. But... She didn't... Didn't sound like someone who's happy for her friend who's getting married. Yeah. Or, like, consistently is ever happy for her. Anything about her bio? Yeah. Tell, um, tell me what you have. She says she's more confident and secure than ever before. Mm -hmm. uh, she says she's the only single girl among her friend group. So it sounds like Larisse probably is in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't, she's not much of a cook, but she mostly cooks for two and then uh, has doesn't have anybody to share it with. So it makes her sad to like eat the same thing for dinner two days in a row because she cooked enough for two people. And she wishes that when she does make something good, Maybe somebody would would eat it and enjoy it with her. Yeah. Um, she was quarantined with her last boyfriend, the last relationship she was in. They decided that they would do the first portion of lockdown quarantine uh, together, and they were. She put it as a, she said they were like playing house, mm -hmm. um, and she really liked that aspect of it but it turns out that he had been cheating on her the whole time during quarantine uh, i think so yeah or uh, like, so that's like trash that's totally yeah. trash like don't cheat on your significant other for sure but like ah uh, didn't deal, deal with the global pandemic very well man no, no i don't know i don't know yeah so she said that she likes being in a relationship but has a pattern of dating the wrong guys so she wants the experts to like take care of that whole wrong guy thing mm, for her because she's too accommodating and insecure yeah she, yeah she said she's been too accommodating in the past but she believes that she's learned her lessons to stand up for herself but she said that with like the tone of voice that she said that in was as though she were asking for permission to say it you know she doesn't strike me as a confident person I'm happy for her that she's feeling more confident, but um, 
I'm sad for her sad eyes. Yeah. Uh, that really... brings us to the bachelor, like the celebrations, the bachelor parties. Mm. And to the table, to the group of girls, she said, I'm really confident. Yeah. And I wrote it down as like a question. I think I did the same thing. I, yeah, I, I, think... I was like, sweetie, is that a question? Her mom also said that she will hold stuff in until she just explodes. So, learned her lesson and accommodating looks like really similar. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't really know whether or not she's changed until she like explodes, whatever that means for her. Yeah. I feel like it's really passive aggressive. Yeah. Hardcore passive aggressive. Yeah. That's my sense. I don't know. Yeah, it, could um, be, yeah. it could be like arson. I don't know. <clears throat> um, but man. Yeah, it's always hard to tell in these first episodes. Yeah, um, it's just like people's impression of what they... And then how it's cut together and... Yeah. So that, honestly, uh, you know... Yeah. yeah, that's one thing that, you know, unfortunately, I hope that she's not someone that doesn't communicate as much as I would like her to, because again, at that, hey, hey. Shrek would be preferable yeah. to the way a lot of fairy tales go. Uh, and even aside from that, maybe to looking at it a little less literally, just that's pretty big extremes. That's a real black and, like, black and white thinking. Yeah. Either or thinking. Uh, it's either going to be the best thing in the whole world ever or the you know a fiery flaming wreck yeah just and like, marriage is kind of like uh sort of just hopefully kinda, neither of those things yeah kind of in between kind of in between yeah <laughs> oh. kind of in the middle of that maybe leaning a little one way or the other at times but he seemed to be really really interested in unattainability yeah yeah, he, he most wanted the unattainable. Yeah, he even said, he said, I'm looking for a wife that is ideally perfect. Um, he said, ideally perfect, which is... A, a nonsense lot. sentence. That's a lot of words to put together. <laughs> um, yeah. What else do we have here? It's been two years since his last relationship. Is that right? Yes. And he had a really long list of things that he wanted yeah. for a wife. Yeah. Um, oh, I, you wrote this. He either wants a dog or a wife. Um, he seemed to also be describing a friendly dog. Yeah. Um, so yeah. just companionship and someone to spend Sundays with and, yeah. you know. Yeah, a lot of that was in the, in the matchmaking special where he really went into a lot more detail about what he was looking for. And he described his, how he has his life all perfectly set in a routine. He's a... NASA flight specialist and he's very particular and he just seemed to describe wanting a dog yeah um, yeah or a pet wife I guess is something you know something we a term we use a lot when we're talking yeah. about the show sometimes these guys uh really have an ideal and it's gonna be that or nothing else yeah yeah um I see I had written down you know his, his name on the show his little tag name or whatever they call him Mr. Perfectionist um I written that down in my notes and then circled it a couple of times yeah. after he'd been talking because uh, he really very very precise and you know that's what i wanted my nasa flight specialist absolutely yeah, yeah 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 i'm not trying to judge him he's who i want doing that kind of job but being really good at that kind of job and relationships are very 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 different skills that don't transfer like yeah. you think they would yeah, especially for something uh, like Married at First Sight that's random. Not random, but he doesn't he, he doesn't know what to expect. That seems... Uh, a lot. It seems like a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, I have, I, I'm a little worried about, about these, uh, these two, honestly. Yeah. Uh, she seems like she really withdraws a lot and withdraws. 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 Like she kind of keeps everything in and doesn't really say what's on her mind. Mm -hmm. And he has a particular idea about what a wife is. Yeah. So I fear that their house is going to be full of resentment. Yeah. So I fear that their house is going to be full of resentment and a lot of passive aggressive nonsense. I'm going to say. 
Um, oh, a yeah. lot of her saying stuff to the camera, but not really telling him. A lot of him not getting it. No, and I don't. Not knowing that he doesn't get it. Yeah. I just somehow I don't see him picking up on some of the more subtle nuances of of a practiced passive aggressive person. Oh no, he's gonna have no idea, no idea. Yeah. At all. Could you imagine his workplace having passive aggressive people in it? I'm sure it does, but like. It's some stuff that, like, they don't really try to put up with in environments like that. That makes sense. Yeah. Because of the danger. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I made him a wife. Wife. Oh, yeah. Our family wife. This is very silly. This is very silly. Let's see. Oh, another thing about Jose, I wanted because at the bachelor party, he was uh, he was kind of acting as though he were he was embarrassed about it, but he said that he had prepared and written down a number of questions that he wanted to ask his soon to be wife. Uh, that number of questions is two hundred fifty six. He wrote down two hundred fifty six individual questions that he hopes to ask the woman that he is going to marry. On Just, television without meeting her first. So right. it seems like what he really wanted was to meet someone first and know everything about them before he got married. Yeah. Um, hmm. That's a lot of questions. That's an awful lot of questions. Uh, Johnny said that Jose was like a rare Pokemon. That's uh, right. Described him as a rare Pokemon. And, uh, so he hopes that whoever Jose marries will be uh, able to appreciate the rare Pokemon. So, um, I see it. Nice. In, I see it in Rachel, though. You know, like I think if anyone can appreciate him, I think it's going to be someone like her. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I don't want to write them off at all, and I don't want to. I don't want to be flippant about the way I'm talking. We're talking about either of them, really, but. Because, we, you know, it's so hard to tell on these first episodes. I always, most of the time, I just love love and I believe in love. And I think they're all going to be you a do. perfect match. You Everyone, do. I'm like, oh, you no, do. this is the best match in history until the next match. <laughs> Except for a few times, I'm like, no, I don't know, I don't know about this yeah. one. But I still maybe, but, you know, if they can just believe in love <laughs> and really embrace how they complement each other and maybe stop being such buttholes then it'll work and everyone will be happy and they'll have kids and those kids will be happy and they'll marry each other it'll be amazing oh it'll be like did you ever watch degrassi growing up no. oh my god it was like degrassi yeah. and then all of the students from degrassi got grew up and got married and had kids and then it's degrassi the next generation and they just keep making the show nice. with all those people's kids and now it's like the fourth one or the third one now and wow. i feel like that's what i want to happen with married at first sight i want like married at first sight the next generation right. where we just keep going like this forever and ever and ever until we've like accidentally that. like reinvented ancient civilization mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what i want this is good stuff this is but really good for stuff. tv and selling medicine right yeah yeah we gotta keep selling medicine medicine of the future absolutely anything else we need to say about jose and rachel jose i do not think so what is your prediction at the end of six weeks? Do they stay together? Ooh, Ooh. This is a, that's a really tough one. I think I'm going to go with my heart on this one, uh, which says, yes, I want to believe that he can loosen up and that maybe she's not too sad. Mm. But it's a tough one. Hi. Bye. He might also... But he also seems really uptight and control. So <sighs> I'm gonna have to go with divorce on this one. I really don't see these two sticking together for the six weeks. I'm gonna have to say divorce. I think that her withdrawing and being really passive aggressive and him not being able to see it is uh it's gonna lead to the big ex the big explosion, like Rachel's mom said. Mm -hmm. And that big explosion is gonna be on decision day. She's gonna out of nowhere to him will know it's happening mm -hmm. and out of nowhere to him she'll just be like you didn't wash the dishes and you did this and you did that and i'm out of here that's mm -hmm. what i think is gonna happen okay interesting that's my prediction yeah i'm not saying you're wrong 
I'm not saying you're wrong. We'll have no. to we'll have to re predict next no, next we'll, week. We'll have to see. We'll, we'll have, have to predict again in the future. Yeah. <laughs> well we gotta see how they interact on wedding night. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, cool. Cool. Rachel and Jose on the books. We really appreciate your time and attention. We love talking. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What are your pre-wedding predictions? If, we, if you like what you see, like our video. It makes us get like hugs. But without all this attention. Ooh. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get a thousand subscribers. Help us meet that goal. And to be notified of new episodes of Just Here to Make Friends, hit the bell. <laughs> Is that the end of the show? Yeah, I, I think we did it. Cool. cool. <laughs>